In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to lay up fibreglass and resin into a gel coated mould, as well as how to work out material quantities. Before we start fibreglassing, we need to work out the amount of resin required for the quantity of chopped strand we're applying into the mould. To do this, you need to first know which weight grade you're going to use. The fibreglass in the UK is identified by its grams per square metre. For example here, 300 grams, 450 grams, 600 grams, etc. We're going for the most commonly used 450 grams. You'll notice that the rules are sold by weight, with the approximate square metre coverage displayed next to it. We know the matting we're using is 450 grams per square metre, so we simply multiply 450 by the surface area of our mould, let's say 1.5 square metres. Then we multiply that figure by how many layers we're going to use. In this example, it gives us a total of over 2,000 grams, which is just over 2 kilograms. As it's just over 2 kilos, we go for the next pack size up, which is a 3 kilogram pack of matting. This would give us plenty of matting to carry out our project. Next, we need to choose our resin, and polyesters or vinyl esters are most commonly used with chopped strand matting. We have plenty of polyesters to choose from, and if unsure, simply check out the video on this link, which explains more about the resins and their use. We're going to choose General Purpose, which is the standard for most projects, but if you're still unsure, speak to our technical team. The general rule is that you'll use approximately 2.5 kilos of resin per 1 kilo of matting when laying into a mould. So for that, we would multiply our 2 kilos of matting by 2.5 kilos of resin, which equates to 5 kilos of resin needed. It's always best to add around 10% or more to this figure as this calculation is only approximate and can vary depending on the type of resin and the user's level of skill. Here we've just added another 2.5 kilograms due to the extra matting we added. This will give us plenty of materials to allow for wastage, especially if you're a beginner in fibreglassing. Another easy method, which is quite useful if your mould is an obscure shape or if you're using off-cut pieces and maybe don't know the weight of the matting you may already have, is to have your materials pre-cut as a kit and simply weigh the whole kit and multiply that figure by 2.5. As shown here, we're using a piece of matting to roughly get our size and shape and we'll use this as a template to cut the subsequent layers. We put the whole kit on the scales, which weighs 570 grams. We multiply 570 by 2.5, which gives us a total of 1.42 kilograms of resin required. And we'll round this up to 1.5, which is just under 10% extra to allow for wastage. Using our catalyst dispenser, which has a 15mm measuring spout, we measure out and add 2% catalyst to the resin. 2% is 20 mils per kilogram or litre of resin, so for our 1.5 kilogram we've added 30 mils. As you mix the catalyst in, you'll usually see the resin change colour slightly. This is a good indication that the resin is catalyzed. Thank you. 
Firstly, wet out the gel coated surface with resin. If you'd like to see how to apply the brush gel coat, see our link at the end of the video. Once the gel coat is covered in resin, apply, then lay over your matting. Apply more resin to the matting using a stippling motion, being quite methodical in the application of the resin to ensure you don't miss any areas. When using an unpigmented clear resin such as this, the matting should start to turn from white to transparent. This is a good indication that you have a good resin to glass ratio. You'll notice earlier that we tore the matting for our overlaps rather than cutting. This is a good method to help the overlaps of the matting blend in rather than having a straight cut. Try to avoid brushing the resin on from side to side too much as this could disturb and separate the fibres to a point which will cause weak areas in your laminate. Try to keep stippling or, alternatively to speed up the wetting out process and avoid moving the fibres, use our nylon resin rollers. The ones with the blue stripe tend to be more resistant to the solvents in polyester resin. These are very useful for covering large areas quickly, as demonstrated on this large flat panel. After approximately 30 to 40 seconds, the resin starts to break down the emulsion binder that holds the fibres in place. This makes it easier for you to push the fibres into corners and for the matting to conform to the shape of the mould. Once the matting is stippled in place, follow on with a paddle roller. This is an aluminium ribbed roller used to expel any trapped air and consolidate the layers of fibreglass together. Also, for any corners, use a disc corner ruler, often known as a radius ruler, to expel any trapped air in the corners. Both of these rulers can be easily cleaned in acetone and reused. Repeat these steps for all your layers of fibreglass, ensuring all trapped air is removed and each layer is fully consolidated. As you can see, our calculations were quite accurate and we don't have much wastage at all in our bucket. However, results can vary between types of resins, application method and level of user's experience. If you do run out of resin, simply ensure all the fibreglass is consolidated with the rollers before mixing any more resin, as you do not want these layers to cure unconsolidated while you mix a new batch. Also, you don't have to mix all the resin at once, you can break it down into easy to manage quantities, especially for larger projects. Once your last layer is fully wet out and consolidated, follow on again with the brush just to tidy up and flatten any protruding fibres and leave the resin to cure. One tip, if you're lucky enough to catch your laminate when it's semi-cured, is to trim the excess fibreglass off with a sharp trimming knife. This could reduce finishing time and effort later. In some cases, you may only need to sand the edges after finishing apart after using this method. Ensure to remember to leave lifting tabs to make demoulding of the part easy. Once fully cured, sand off any hard splinters of fibreglass and vacuum off any dust. Another option to the finished part is to protect the inside surface with flow coat. Flow coats can be found in our gel coats and flow coats section of the website. We have various types, even non-slip and spray versions. But for this, we are using the standard brush flow coat, which is available in RAL colours or British standard colours. We're choosing the British Racing Green from the British Standard range for this project. For every kilogram of flow coat, you will get a coverage of approximately 1.6 square metres. Our mould is 0.54 metres by 0.9 metres, which gives us 0.48 square metres to cover. 
Divide this by 1.6 and this tells us we need just over 300 grams of flow coat to cover our project. We pre-mix our tin of flow coat thoroughly. Weigh out our 300 grams and catalyze with 2% catalyst, just like we did with the resin. Then we apply this liberally with a brush. It is important when using flow coat that it's used correctly, especially when it comes to temperature, moisture and pre-mixing advice. So please do see our link at the end of this video on how to apply brush flow coat. Once our part has fully cured, we can lift it out of the mould. Start by pulling the part away from the sides. Wedges can usually be tapped in between the mould and the fibreglass part in most cases, to help release it. However, due to the shape of this particular mould, they wouldn't be very effective in getting under the part. So, using our lifting tabs that we left earlier, or any fibreglass which is above our part's trim line, we attach a pair of mould grips. Then, using a lever, we lift the part out of the mould. You may need to try this on all sides until the part releases. One good tip is to protect your mould and the part from scratches or chips by placing a cotton cloth between the grips and the lever. Once out of the mould, your part is ready for final trimming and finishing. As mentioned earlier, here's the link to our video on how to apply brush gel coat to a mould. Also, our video on how to mix and apply brush gel coat. Thanks for watching today. We do hope you found this video informative and we hope to see you again soon. Don't forget, all the products shown can be found on our website at ecfiberglasssupplies.co.uk.